summer in Adelaide's parklands. A time when the sounds of pounding hooves, whistles and splashing water signifies the arrival of the Australian premier equestrian competition. This is the Mitsubishi Motors Australian International Three Day Event. The only five star globally held in the heart of a city. It's amazing. There's, um, there's no other event like it. To be able to gallop through the city is just, there's something so special about it. A spectacular and iconic social and sporting fixture in the capital of South Australia. For these athletes, the stakes couldn't be higher. Here, selection for Tokyo Games is on the line. Oh, this year's three day is it's crunch time. Tokyo's next year. Um, everyone is like fighting for place in that team. Olympic medalists Megan Jones and Stuart Tinney know what it takes. To be honest, getting to an Olympic Games in itself is an achievement. But now there is a new generation snapping at their heels. To represent Australia is sort of everything. It's something that you dream about. And a host of New Zealand riders and horses have come to spoil the party. Oh, I mean, I have huge respect for this event. This, for, particularly for the New Zealanders, this is a massive stepping stone event for us. Victoria Park is the setting for day one, a venue that has hosted horse racing in Adelaide for 180 years. The audience will be on the edge of their seats to see how the judges' marks in the dressage will affect the leaderboard. But it will be the cross country, as always, that brings out the crowds in numbers. The atmosphere is ridiculous. We don't see it um, in this country at all. British course designer Mike Etherington-Smith has produced a course that will test the trust, determination and courage of horse and rider. It's the highest level in the sport in the world, so the guys have got to come here with their A-game on. The Gillian Rolton Arena plays host to the final jumping phase, where a clean and fast round will put them in the running for the biggest prize money for eventing in the Southern Hemisphere. And every rider's dream, a possible coveted place on the Olympic team. It's pretty amazing, you know, we work all year round for this. Welcome to Adelaide, a five-star event in a five-star location. The 2019 Mitsubishi Motors Australian International three-day event is back again. Moving here since 1997, the 23rd edition proves to be one of the most exciting in history. Day one, the Pride's Easy Feed Dressage Day, and I'm joined by Olympian and team gold medalist from the Atlanta Olympics in 96 and two-time winner here, Wendy Schaefer. Wendy, welcome. It's fabulous to be here, watching these fantastic horses in the beautiful Adelaide Parklands. Uh, Lauren Brown did her best test yet at Adelaide uh, to be well placed going into the cross country. Here we see Hazel Shannon and Clifford. She's done some fantastic trot work at this stage in her test and we're seeing just the finish of her can to work. With Clifford looking nice and relaxed in the uh, stretch can to circle. And a great result for her, just 0.4 off the lead going into the cross country. But it was this young lady tipped for the top by Ekra Ratings, Emma Bishop and CP Izzy Mayaki. One of the best tests, first to go. And the question was, were the judges going to throw the marks away? And they certainly did. They rewarded well. And the overnight leader after dressage was to be Emma Bishop, just 0.4 ahead of Willingham Park Clifford and the former two-time winner, Hazel Shannon. And the overnight leaderboard looks like this. Emma Bishop, CP Izzy Mayaki, 30.3 in first. Second, Hazel Shannon, Willing Apart Clifford, 30.7. And Lauren Brown, Sky's to Limit, in third on 31. Qantas Cross Country Day was a bright start, and the Adelaide's East Parklands were starting to fill up with the crowds that moved in from the city, and they were in for a real treat. The cross-country course here in Adelaide is always unique. A new start to the course this year, not starting in the main arena or finishing in the main arena. It was going to be a real change. 29 numbered fences, 45 jumping efforts all in all. They cross over two main roads, Wakefield Road, Bartels Road and through two public parklands. Across the East Parklands from Victoria Park into Park 15 and finally Rymel Park back home. 
The cross country is always influential and it's a long, twisty track running through the olive groves. The distance around the cross country for 2019 is 6,560 metres with an optimum time of 11 minutes 31. OK, 16 AB, we're about halfway around the course. First time into water, there's a lot of atmosphere around here, a lot of noise. It's all about coming down, keeping a line, making sure the turn is good, because the difficult thing is you've got four strides then to the narrow brush, which I slightly bullfinch to make it a bit more difficult. If they don't fancy jumping that triple brush, there is an alternative, which is a blue and white cabin in the background, which will use up a lot of valuable time. OK, fence 18, back into the lake again. We've done a short loop, come back. It's, a, it's what I call a sucker fence. And it's very, very simple to have a run out here. And it's a real question of the riders coming down the slope, lining this up and, and riding it properly. They're landing on dry land. Then they go through the water, just see the coming out of the other side, 19 AB, up the step, which we made into a house. So they jump up well and then bounce over the angled brush. 21 ABC, it's the last combination. What's quite an intense area here by the lake. Spread fence here, big spread, maximum top spread of two meters. They jump this well, it's all about how they jump this. And if they do a good job here, then the third element, the second brush corner, should unfold quite nicely. It's a real rider fence and a test of the horse's honesty and control at this point of the course. Well, the first to go Five, on the cross-country course around three, Mike Etherington Smith's two, course is one, Emma Bishop and go, CP right. Izzy Mayaki. Echo ratings had them in their prediction centre as one of the favourites to win this competition and to see us through the cross-country, Wendy Schaefer. Emma has a fantastic relationship with this mare, having previously won at four-star long format, and she's the current New South Wales champion. And we can see why. Well, coming to the Mitsubishi Motors Mounds, three fences from home, and this really takes some jumping. And just about, oh, and down she goes, just hitting the top of the fence on the top of the hill. CP Izzy Mayaki and pops the string for good measure, but that, I'm afraid, is the overnight leader out of the competition. Well, that a real shake-up for certainly Equa ratings and certainly for the field here. Emma stood very little chance of staying in the saddle, but very good to see her up on her feet and she'll be disappointed to say the least. Well, Jessica Grossman, Belmont backstage as we see them come down to the water for the first time. Amazing how athletic Belmont backstage was there to make sure that he got into the water safely. Uh, just the perception of where his feet were was quite spectacular to watch there. Well, just taking the slightly longer but safer route, sensible bit of riding for Jessica, don't you think, Wendy? Oh, look, absolutely. She's made sure she's clear of jumping penalties, but um, much better to be safe than sorry and, and potentially have a run out at the B element. Well, a miraculous recovery and a clever bit of jumping from Belmont backstage. You just see how he kicks off the log going into the water. But on to the South Australian tourism keyhole to finish. Jessica Grossman and Belmont backstage. A few jumping penalties and a few time penalties. They were the first to complete and she was delighted with her cross-country performance. Well, the stars of the eventing world were out in force. The Horston Cross Country Walk with the Stars proved more popular than ever. A great opportunity for our spectators to have access to Stuart Tinney and watch him walk with great detail the cross country course. Join us after the break for more cross country action. There's not another event in the world like Adelaide Three Day. I've travelled a lot with horses and, and this event just has the most amazing atmosphere and we're just so lucky that Adelaide lets us use the middle of the city. My horse is, uh, her name is Oaks Cordelia and I call her Heidi because she's the long-legged supermodel. I don't think that you could do it if you didn't love it because it's, it's time consuming, it's heartbreaking. The highs are so rare compared to the lows, but we've got a beautiful community that we ride with and we're all very supportive of each other and, and appreciate how hard it is to do what we do. It's not like any other sport, so it's wonderful. I love it. Well, let's see Jade Finlay and uh, Oaks Cordelia in action. They come down to the hollow at 11. Amazingly influential, this uh, fence, and unfortunately we see Jade be one of the few to have the run out there. It's just difficult to get the horse's eye on it. There's quite a lot of uh, background with the trees, and it comes quite quickly. 
Well, disappointing 20 penalties for Jade Finlay. Oaks Cordelia, they pick up those 20 and a few time faults. But uh, more importantly, they're home and they're safe. Rebecca Italiano and ESB Irish Patience. They start in ninth place on 34.7 after the dressage. Hayley Friedlich didn't have the best dressage yesterday, but a clear cross country round with just a few time faults there made up for that. And we see he was very genuine going a bit of a long three strides there to the Rose Garden corners. Well, Rebecca Italiano, ESB, Irish patients, they took a bit of a heavy fall up at the Channel 7 logo fence at the top of Stag Corner, but good to see them both up on their feet. Megan Jones and Kirby Park Impress, former winners here and team silver medalist. She was at the Beijing Olympics, set out on Mike Edrington Smith's course with great gusto. So Kirby Park Impress was second here in 2017. And yes, Megan was the winner in 2005 on her wonderful little partner, Kirby Park Irish Jester. We just see them at the middle part of the water. Megan sitting very tight at the triple arrow hair brush. She's so experienced and so gritty on the cross country. She gives the horses a lot of confidence. Yeah, very popular in South Australia is Megan, a fantastic coach as well. So she's really uh, giving the young riders the benefit of her experience. Kirby Park Impress bounces up, just steps over the shoulder brush coming out of the water at 19. And now to the Mitsubishi Mounds, this influential fence once again, Wendy. Absolutely. Megan's taking the long route here. Um, and unfortunately, just loses a little bit of rhythm Ooh. and is too far away from the brush fence for Impress to jump that today. Well, another combination that were tipped for success here at the Mitsubishi Motors Australian International, but not getting the stride she wanted to the shoulder brush at the bottom of the hill. Three fences from home. That is Megan Jones out of the competition, but good to see them walking home. Stuart Tinney and Laporis, just eight years of age, 31.9. The dressage, they impressed the three dressage judges. Sue Baxter from Great Britain, Helen Christie from New Zealand, and uh, Bobby Stevenson from the USA. Very confident jump at the Ducks in the main arena. Wow, what a jump he gave there. Now coming to the water, uh, this young horse was very impressive cross country and is looking a bright star for both Stuart and, and for Australia. Uh, perhaps a combination for the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, Stuart, the gold medalist from the Sydney Games, so um, it's extremely well mounted now with this young horse. Well, interestingly here, Stuart, with this young horse, just taking a little bit of time between the fences. And remember, this is uh, Australia's Olympic selection event, and he is riding this horse with great care and attention. Stuart is very aware of where this horse is up to in his Olympic campaign, and we'll perhaps see him go harder for the time at his uh, next competition uh, early next year, closer to Tokyo. Or just 8.8 .8 time penalties for the eight-year-old as we catch up with Andrew Cooper and a reduction at the hollow at 11A and 11B. And again, another combination just slipping out to the right-hand side. They really need to be between your hand and leg there. Difficult fence again. We've seen that uh, Jade had problems there and just a little bit of um, problem with the line and there's just not much leeway there at all. Down to the water, Sarah Clark, LV, Balu Jeans by Balu de Rue. 38.5, the dressage. Doesn't find the dressage easy and taking the longer route. You can just see the crowds, they're really packing in around the lake. Great entertainment value for them. The sun is out. It's a glorious day here in Rymel Park. Yes, we see Sarah here is her first uh, five-star cap on a horse that she's produced herself, so very exciting for her. Uh, we know Jeans is a, a real try and a very genuine horse. Emily Gray, Jocular Vision. Jocular Vision never easy in the dressage, and he held his nerve right to the last centre line and really did impress one of his best dressages to date and superb round on the cross country. She added a few time penalties to finish on 47.3 to lie in seventh place overnight. Five, four, three, just coming into the Bates two, start box one, is Amanda Pottinger two, and just kidding. Second here last year, she comes with great expectations. Amanda Pottinger and just kidding, they complete on 63.2 and will finish in second place. Uh, last year, you know, last year was my first time bringing a horse overseas and my first five star was definitely a big eye-opener you know there was lots of pressures that I sort of didn't see coming and struggled to sleep at night. 
personality-wise, um, he's he's got a show-off attitude. You know, he likes to look good in the dressage, and he will show off. You know, he's got great movement, and he'll show it. But also, he is just a very, very genuine horse cross country. Like his, he looks for the flags. He loves it. His ears pricked. He's wanting to see the next fence, which is just. It's an amazing feeling to sit on a horse that, that wants to do that and really wants to try for you. My ambition this weekend is to improve on all three phases from last year, and if that happens and I end up with the prize, then that's just a bonus. Well, welcome back to the Mitsubishi Motors Australian International three-day event for 2019. Down to the water, Amanda Pottinger, just kidding. Influential and gets in close to that log going in. She's had problems there before, Wendy. Right, well, she's done an amazing job to get in because it's a huge jump going into the water there. And he does leave his front legs a little bit, which um, pops her out of the saddle, but she's uh, been tenacious to uh, stay on her line and commit to get to the, uh, the short option through to the B element. She did incredibly well to regain her balance. She said post uh, cross country that she didn't have a stride going towards that triple air airbrush, but just kidding, is incredibly brave and just looks for the flags and uh, to jump between them. Absolutely, we can see how he's done that, the third element of the cross country app Rose Garden Corners. Well, this off the track thoroughbreds, number of them competing here. It's great to see them in their second career. And he's certainly finishing full of running, plenty left in the tank for just kidding. On to the final fence, the South Australian Tourism Keyhole. Just a few time penalties, is it? No, one second inside the time. She'll Five, go into four, the show jumping in three, second place. Two, First time at Diane Gilder, your attorney, 33.4, the dressage. She impressed the dressage judges. She starts the cross country in fifth. Yes, we see uh, Diane certainly impresses us too in the cross country phase. Horses really is proof looking for the fence there and possibly not an ideal line, but he certainly Ooh. had locked on. <laughs> Nearly <laughs> runs the into the tree there too. And now we see Madeline Wilson and I'm Bruce boldly into the water, but we can see he's just left his left fore a little, unbalancing Madeline, and she's wisely decided to take the long route. Well, exactly why that long route is there. Waste a good few seconds as they turn right-handed and disappear back up through the crowds and onto the two Ibis houses at the top end of Rymel Park. Diane Gilder just coming to the final fence your attorney great round for them they just added 5.2 time penalties to their very first five-star cross-country test tanya smith Laurentino, 14th after dress starts on 38.3 at the stag corner question and uh, didn't get the stride they wanted on a bit of a half stride wendy coming to the uh, corner she was just a little straight over the a element too so it's such a fine line and not much leeway with um, these fences so very cleverly designed by Mike Eglinton Smith, but she's jumped at super on the second attempt. Lauren Brown skies the limits in third place, very close, just a few penalties. In fact, just 0.7 off the lead from uh, Emma Bishop, but we saw Emma fall earlier with CP Izzy Mayaki. Lauren Brown going outside the tree. There is the top two, three, four, five, and it's uh, New Zealand one, two, Amanda Pottinger and Diane Gilder. Lauren Brown going round the horse's head to the two ducks on the angle, coming down to the water for the first time at 19. So another fantastic off-the-track thoroughbred here. Beautiful animals, and we see how he's just sailed through that water jump in a big positive four-stride distance to element B. So confident through the water and full of running as they go up the hill, watching them come through. It's so good to see so many off-the-track thoroughbreds here at a five-star. There's a long career ahead of them and some super talent as she comes on to the final fence, the South Australia Tourism Keyhole. 39 is her finishing score and goes into fourth. Delighted Lauren Brown, Skies Delimit. Here we have Hazel Shannon and Willunga Park Clifford in the final stages of her warm-up. Just under two minutes uh, to go. Her coach and long-term mentor, Heath Ryan. What a fabulous relationship they have had. Looks pretty serious. Looks like she means business. Clifford, he's good in all three phases. I think the cross country is his strength. He's fast and he's just got the biggest heart. He's so bold and we've uh, been together for a long time now, so we know each other really well. 
Well, she didn't need a single fence. It is a clear round for the young Hazel Shannon and Clifford. I certainly don't ever try and rev Hazel up and go for it, you got to go for it. She is naturally um, very quiet, she, she's not sort of outgoing, um, but she is as competitive a uh, student that I have ever coached. And, and you know, and I mean, I've coached individuals that have won gold medals, so, you know, on an international ranking, she's about as a competitive an individual as you could possibly find. It will be a win for Hazel Shannon and winning of Art Clifford, the first horse to ever win here, twice. I've been sort of at this level for, well, it's my fifth year on Clifford now. It still is very difficult every year. It's just a proper five star and we wouldn't want it to be any easier than the rest of the world. Sort of everything this year is, you know, in the back of your mind is there's an Olympics next year. But, you know, I'm just just doing the best I can and there's a lot of very good riders in Australia and outside of Australia who ride for Australia that I have to try and get better then. <laughs> Well, welcome back, and we're down to the final few on the cross country. And first time five star combination is Michael D'Agostino, and it really means a lot to him. Kurori Gatto, not the best of dressages, 42.9, but safely through the water, really playing to the crowds as well. It's loving this, isn't it? It's such a dream for Michael to come here and ride at Adelaide in the five star competition. You can see how excited, how pleased he is with Kurori Gatto. And the first time we get to see the uh, head cam footage and a uh, real bird's eye view of the cross country course as a rider. Wow, this is so exciting to see what the rider actually sees coming into these fences. And he's riding really positively. This horse has given him a fantastic ride on the cross country. Difficult enough though coming out to the bounce fence. They <laughs> have to be powerful, uh, but also very athletic and quick with their feet. Well, crossing over Bartels Road, we come to the next combination fence, three-part combination, and we'll get to see a bird's eye view of this as well. The Horseland Hollows have ridden very well, and we see Michael here successfully negotiating this fence. Well, Michael D'Agostino, Canordigato, getting lots of vocal encouragement. They cross over Wakefields Road through the olive groves, and you can just see how close he gets to the trees, and it's a real meandering line through here. And on to the finish, just a one left to jump. Dream. Well, Michael says it is a dream. On to the last. He punches the air and says yes. First five-star completion. A few time faults, but more importantly, clear for Michael D'Agostino and Kinordi Gatto. Well, uh, it is now Hazel Shannon, the former winner here in 2016 and 2018. Willinger Park Clifford lying in second place now, but she goes out in top spots following the fall of Emma Bishop and CP Izzy Mayaki. Well, she is taking this inside line, the tightest line possible to the two ducks on the angle, a real acute angle, takes the white flag, but no jumping penalties there. And we can just see that special relationship and trust Hazel has with Clifford, taking that inside line. And now we come to the horse med SA hollows. Oh dear, she's just taken the right hand flag there. And we can see close up that the horse's head, neck and shoulders definitely inside the line. He was in fact given 15 penalties by our fence judge there, but after ground jury review, the 15 penalties were taken away. At the combination fence, the Channel 7 combination at the top of the hill at Stag Corner, down to the water for the first time. And this is where Clifford's looking a real pro. Did leave the hind legs a little going into the water, but Hazel's really ridden positively onto the B element and got the positive four strides there. Well, no rider has won this three times. She became the first rider to win in 2018 on the same horse. Wendy Schaefer, Stuart Tinney, Chris Burton, Shane Rose and Hazel Shannon. Five riders have won this title on two occasions, but could she make history 
She had 0.4 of a time penalty when she won in 2016. She had 17.6 time faults in 2018 because he was very strong on the cross country. But the time today looking incredibly good and she was going to be 10 seconds inside the time to finish on her dressage score of 30.7. Fantastic rides through many combinations and particularly the last combination she's gone very quickly through. Just seeing Hamish Cargill and Legolas here looking a super jumping round for Hamish and great to see him so well mounted with a great result clear cross country with just the time faults. Well just 11.2 time faults on the cross country clear jumping for Hamish Cargill and Legolas KP8 47.7 they go into overnight eight. Very tight at the top of the leaderboard. Hazel Shannon leads with Willinger Park Clifford on 30.7. New Zealander Amanda Pottinger, just kidding, second on 34.1. Diane Gilder, your attorney, in third for New Zealand, 38.6. Well, that welfare of the horse paramount at the CCI Five Star here in Australia. Hazel Shannon there just washing and cooling down Willinger Park Clifford after their rigours of the cross country. Well, it's not all about the international horse trials here at the Mitsubishi Motors Australian International three-day event. The crowds came in their droves for YouTube sensation, and this girl is travelling the world. We caught up with Esme. Hello, my name is Esme Higgs, and I'm the owner of the YouTube channel This Esme. I make videos all about things horsey. So I'm here at Adelaide meeting some of my viewers down under here in Australia, and it's just been a really great weekend seeing some incredible sports. Hello everybody, this is me and welcome to Australia. So the thing I love most about making videos is, apart from the creative side, is I just love um, talking with people about horses, having that one thing that we can all connect over. I've never seen anything like that before. So, so at the moment on YouTube, I have 330,000 YouTube subscribers, and altogether I'm getting about 12 million views a month. I'm having such a great time here in Adelaide. It's, we've had such good weather as well. It's so beautiful, it's nice and sunny, and something about this event that's so different, it's so cool to have an event that's actually in the city so we've been able to get some really good footage of the horses galloping through with like the skyscrapers in the background it's just incredible and I'll see you guys next time bye hi I'm Dana Badger from Cowgirls with Wings trick riding and I'm here at the Australian International three-day event my horses are named Honey and Double Jack they're both uh, two red quarter horses. How goes with things trick riding is my business and I perform the art of trick riding on horseback where I perform gymnastics, stunts on a galloping horse such as standing up, hanging upside down and just sharing it with all over, people all over Australia. I love what I do because it involves animals and horses and my business also includes geese and ducks and. Animals are everything for me and my business and anything with animals just brings me joy and happiness and I love to share that with the world. Running alongside the Mitsubishi Motors CCI 5 star, the RM Williams CCI 4 star short. It was a very good day for a lot of riders but the cross country once again proved to be influential. Matthew Gasky and Times 2, a superbly timed round across the country means that he rose up the leaderboard to finish in second after cross country. But Andrew Cooper and River Breeze, they certainly breezed around the cross country course and a very quick round saw them clear and inside the optimum time. On to show jumping day, Jessica Ray. She was down the leaderboard after the dressage and the cross country, but a superb clear round meant that they would finish in at least second place. Andrew Cooper, River Breeze, just 10 years of age, showed athleticism and precision in the final phase. A lot of vocal encouragement. But a clear round saw him victorious and winning the four-star short.
originally was planning to come here and do the five star on the horse. We thought he was probably still a little bit green, had a lot of advice just to come here and got told to win the four star. I didn't think it would actually happen, but we pulled it off. Um, he was amazing all weekend, good dressage, super cross country and super clear run today, so really happy. The horse and CCI three star long was full of thrills and for David Middleton, spills. Mick Pinio's cross country course proved tough. Samuel Jeffrey would mount Lolita, a really good round across the country, saw them inside the time. A tangy password and Tegan Ashby, another one to prove that the time was achievable. But Gemma Tinney and the six-year-old Diablo contesting their very first CCI three-star long looked class and really did go well into the final show jumping phase. And third after dressage with a fantastic clear in the last phase, it was Gemma Tinney that came out on top. Second, Tegan Ashby with Waitangi Password. And third for Samuel Jeffrey, the two Victorian riders, Woodman Lolita in third. The Atco World Cup qualifying round, the show jumping, took place at the Gillian Rotten Main Arena, Victoria Park, Paco Pacanthi, as it's known to the locals. These horses are trained specifically in the jumping phase and have not contested the cross country and the previous days. Here we have Russell Johnson on the fabulous Deprice, who's provided the only two clear show jumping rounds in this competition for victory. Uh, Russell was actually a former team member for the whole Australian um, equestrian team in Atlanta in 1996 Olympics. Uh, he contested the show jumping discipline. The 11-year-old Depreece at this influential double, really showing scope and athleticism through that double. And as you said, one of only, well, in fact, the only clear round of the day. And he really did show his class. 11 years old Depreece, they won the Adelaide Royal just a few weeks ago back in September and came here full of confidence. Yes, absolutely. They'd had some really good rounds too at um, the previous weekend's Australian National Jumping Championship. So in very good form is Russell Johnson on the place. Well, clearing the last, that confirmed his victory of leg seven of 11. Yeah, look, this is a fantastic crowd, you know, the venue here. Uh, this is like a real European show, so yeah, awesome. The final day of the Australian International three-day event starts with the final horse inspection, sponsored by TRM. Probably the most nerve-wracking time of the competition. The vet and ground jury assess the horses to make sure they're sound and fit to complete the final phase. And with things as tight as they are at the top of the leaderboard, less than one fence between the top two, Hazel Shannon is safely through. I think we've done probably close to our best performances in the first two phases, so I mean we're at a good point this far in the competition. Uh, a lot can change today, but Clifford is, I know he'll give me 100% and he's feeling good and we're ready to go. Well Hazel Shannon is ready and so are we. This is the Mitsubishi Motors CCI 5 star jumping and I'm joined once again for the final phase by Wendy Schaefer. What a fabulous young horse this is. It's so much air. We do just have a rail here, which was enough to put him down a place or two, but um, very exciting for the future. We see him with so many fences, a lot of air time. Very talented young horse, just eight years of age. John Valance, the course designer, once again has produced a fantastic track for the five-star competitors. Not only designing the five star, four star, three star, but also the World Cup as well. Just over the time as well for Stuart Tinney and Laporis. It is 0.4 of a time penalty for every second as Hazel Shannon looks on. Lauren Brown, sky's the limit in fourth place after the cross country on 39.9. We see Lauren successfully jumping fence seven there. She's turning back to the tricky plank, so a real wave here. Don't want to jump the highest point, which she didn't, but unfortunately that fence has come down, which will be costing her uh, placings as she moves through the show jumping phase. Well, one fence down, four penalties to add for Lauren Brown. 
and just approaching the final line, three fences left. We have quite a tricky double and a steady distance down to the last. Oh dear, not quite sure what he did wrong then, but wasn't he genuine to jump out and clear over the last as well? Well, eight jumping, point four of a time penalty for Lauren Brown and Sky's to limit. Still a good score for them as uh, we now catch up with uh, Diane Gilder, your attorney, in their first five star, lying in third place after the cross country. Middle part of the treble goes. Little bit of a unique style in the show jumping. Absolutely, not all eventing horses are going to have the best style as jumpers. They go cross country. It's uh, difficult for them to uh, come back from a jump out of a full gallop to be jumping the um, height and I suppose the shorter distances in the show jumping round. So it is a challenge to ride a horse that's galloped so far the previous day and now in a quite a different phase or a different type of jumping. Well, four fences down and just over the time allowed, 77 seconds. So 16 jumping, 0.4 of a time penalty. That means that Diane Gilder and your attorney will go down the leaderboard. Lying in second place after cross country, it is Amanda Pottinger and Just Kidding. They were second here last year in their first five start, but already the first fence down. They had four fences down last year and she'll want to improve on her 2018 performance. Yes, certainly that first fence has been really influential for the jumping phase here. And there is a lot of pressure on a clear round, puts more pressure on the leader, Hazel Shannon. But more fences down for Amanda, obviously puts her down the leaderboard also. But it's fantastic little off the track thoroughbred and he was a joy to watch galloping around the track yesterday. Well, steeped in family history, the Pottinger family, Tinks, uh, Amanda's mother, rode at World Championships in Gawler before the horse stars moved here, in fact, back in 1997. And also Amanda's grandmother, a very successful showwoman. And I believe her, um, there's a relation there too as a hockey player, so a very athletic family, uh, but certainly have been extremely successful in the equestrian sports. Well, back rail of the Liverpool goes as well, carrying eight jumping as they move to the final line. So three fences down, 12 to add, over the time allowed as well for Amanda Pottinger. That puts pay to her chances of finishing in the top two. 81.2 the time, so a few time penalties as well. They finish on a score of 48.1. Hazel Shannon and Willinger Park Clifford, two-time winner here, no horse, no rider has ever won this title on three occasions. She won here in 2016 with a clear round. She won here last year with two fences down. She's now got a little bit of breathing room, but we know that things can go wrong very quickly. I suppose some horses have a fence down and they lose confidence. Oh. Uh, we see that she's just had one down, so we hold our breath now for Hazel to be restorative, shall we say, in the rest of the round. Well, if she can win this title, she'll join history books and uh, the likes of Great Ovation, Mark Phillips, who won Babington three times, Winsome Adanti and Kim Severson, Kentucky three times, Avebury, Andrew Nicholson, very lucky at the planks, Avebury, who won Burley three times, and Fisher Rakana, Mikkel Young, who won Kentucky three times. This is an elite list of horse and rider combinations. She's carrying the eight. Stuart Tinney, Laporis, currently on 45.9. She can afford one more fence down, but I think she's going to take the title for 2019. <laughs> Hazel Shannon wins her third title here at the Australian International 3 day event and joins a list of greats. Very exciting to see Hazel do this. Adelaide's a fantastic event and we've now put it further on the map as being one of those very few uh, five-star competitions that have had a three-time winner. Well, what a result for Hazel Shannon winning a Park Clifford, being congratulated by there, her mother. It's a real team and family effort, father there as well, as the congratulations continue. Hazel Shannon goes into the history books, Willinger Park Clifford, owned by Jeanette and Terry Snow.
Oh, it's pretty amazing. I was trying for a clear round, but it didn't happen. Um, you know, it was a hard day yesterday. And of course, Clifford will come out and still try really hard. He's just, um, it would be nice to finish on a clear round. But anyway, I'm stoked, I'm so happy. We saw pictures of Heath. He was on the edge of his seat, falling off the chair, actually. Yeah, what's it like working with Heath? He's won here before. He's obviously knows a lot about the sport. Oh, it's awesome. Um, I don't think there's anyone around who'll put as much time and dedication into his pupils. And for someone like me who, um, you know, I don't have to make the same mistakes he did just by, you know, learning. I can hear about them from him and, yeah, three Adelaides later. No, I'm thrilled with him. He's such a baby, but he's got such a sweet personality and wants to do the job, so... Yeah, it's really thrilled. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, it's our second five star ever and I've brought him up from off the track. So to do that, uh, I'm lost for words, really. <laughs> well, what a result. The final leaderboard, Hazel Shannon wins with Willingham Park Clifford on 38.7. Stuart Tinney, Lepore second on 45.9. With Lauren Brown, Sky's the Limit in third on 47.4. Greg Rolton, husband of the late Jill Rolton, presenting Hazel Shannon with her winning trophy. And uh, Hazel goes into the history books, becoming the fifth horse and rider combination to win three five stars. Hazel being presented with her second Mitsubishi car. What a treat for her and what a result. We hope you've enjoyed all of the action from the Mitsubishi Motors Australian International Three Day Event. We certainly have. My thanks to Wendy Schaefer and the whole team. We'll see you next year.